text to image AI is getting really good. It's now a reliable way to create completely original concepts. This image came from mid journey and I decided to recreate it. I'm going to show you how I did it. I started off with a Daz 3D model. Usually, I don't go this route, but I wanted to try to get this done as fast as possible. And uh, obviously this is a really quick way to go about getting a 3D model finished, as opposed to starting from scratch. And But next time, I'm definitely going to do it from scratch. Because one thing I've found with working with DAS 3D models is that they, the end result, it, it seems like no matter how hard you try, the end result always comes out looking dead and very default and, um, and uh, a little too symmetrical. So there's a lot you have to do to make it asymmetrical. And, um, the work doesn't really seem to be worth it uh, to kind of backtrack and make it look worse, right? So next time, I'm, I'm just going to go from scratch. With this piece, mm, I wasn't planning on going for a full turntable 360, figuring out her back and everything. And I, I just wanted to get the front, right? Just get the idea from the original AI prompt. So I focus more on what I can see from the image as opposed to figuring out what's going on in the back. Again, this is just purely uh, time based. Again, I wanted to get this done as quick as possible. Here I'm making the horns and I'm not worrying too much about getting proper geometry. Again, I'm working with Dynamesh. So here I'm deleting the eyes and I'm trying to redo them. Again, I'm trying to stay away from the Daz 3D uh, default looking female model. And uh, funny thing is, is, it ends up looking almost the exact same. And I feel like that's the issue here is you try to backtrack from your base mesh and then you end up with uh, something that looks the same. blocking out the main shapes of the armor and her weird neck dress. I start to try to figure out what's going on in the back. I'm designing some interesting something. I like doing this technique with the eyes where you paint in the whole thing and then you basically sculpt in the eyes as opposed to putting in an eyeball. Pulling out the, creating geometry for the armor pieces. It's a simple process really. You mask out your sculpt, you group it. Uh, I usually duplicate the model and then I separate the groups and delete the hidden. And then I just do a Z remesher and it usually ends up looking pretty good. I pose the model a little bit to make her a little bit more dynamic. Again, trying to get away from the original Daz 3D pose. Again, I separated the top part. Here I'm working on getting that kind of tube that goes around 
and separates the dome head and her and her face. A quick Z remesher and now I have the dome head. I'm actually really starting to enjoy using uh, the ZBrush uh, Z modeling tools. Typically, I would always do my hard surface elsewhere uh, in Maya or now in Blender. Um, but I'm finding those tools in ZBrush to be pretty powerful and quick to use. Once you kind of understand the weird mm, kind of esoteric way you're supposed to use them, they end up being pretty good. Again, separating out, separating out pieces to create my base geo. And I'm just starting with getting the geometry first. And I think here I went a little too far in getting good geo. Because, I don't know, it's weird. Like when you make a commitment to work with proper geometry, it gives you a lot more work in the end because there's a lot more to manage and also you don't want to lose your good geometry right you don't take as many risks so it's good to stick with dynamesh for as long as possible because you take more risks in the end you're not so careful Now I'm trying to figure out how to get these vertical ribbons. So I brought it into Houdini because Houdini is a great tool for this kind of thing. And I sort of bumble around a little bit trying to come up with something that's purely procedural. Putting it in a for loop and trying to do a little bit of X. I don't really get too far. And in the end, I scrap what I was working on and just decide to do it by hand. I'm using Modeler in Houdini, which is just a fantastic tool, which allows you to, it turns Houdini into a, uh, it, it, it gives you like a tool set within Houdini that is comparable to working with other DCCs like Maya or Blender. Plus you end up with all of Houdini's wonderfulness. So then I just brought those back into um, ZBrush using the modeler tool in Houdini, which allows you to really quickly bring ZBrush assets to Houdini and then send them back to ZBrush. Here I'm having a similar issue with the vertical tubes that go up her neck and underneath her jaw. And I end up doing those in Houdini as well.
You notice that I remeshed the shirt and up resed it and sculpted on it that way. Because uh, I plan on posing this model. And it is good to have geometry uh, and um, uh, like a subdivided geometry and work on that, sculpt on the high res, and then use the low res for posing. Because if you have a really high res model and you try to pose that, it's hard to mask areas out and you have to do a lot of fixing afterwards. Doing that same technique here where I'm masking out an area. One thing I like to do with panels is I like to use the poly or the uh, polish brush to flatten out the areas that I cut out after I separate them. And then I do a Z remesh that usually comes up with a really smooth result. Here I brought in the vertical neck geometry there and I'm doing the same technique as before. Just a quick sweep node, a little bit of extrusion on the ends there, but I decided it's not thick enough so I extruded a couple more pieces and bring it back into ZBrush, mirror it and sculpt them, move them into place, kind of giving this sort of fanning them out a little bit underneath her head or her jar. Here I have symmetry off and so I turn symmetry off when I'm doing the details but the thing is, is at this point the it's so symmetrical that uh, the smaller details don't really do much you know they're so tertiary that the the symmetry still stands out a little too much which ends up giving the model a plastic lifeless look i'm being a little hard on myself here i must admit now i start going in and painting out the model trying to find the color from the image. And I'm doing it by eye, I'm not color picking, and I don't think I quite nailed it. Here I'm masking out the lips and adjusting the colors as opposed to painting them in. Again, I have symmetry off to allow for some deviation from symmetry, but I leave symmetry on for the eyebrows. So I'm trying to, at first I tried to create eyelashes using fiber mesh, but I found it really unruly. Uh, frankly, I don't really know how to do it. I've never done it before. Mm. And I didn't like the result, it was too chunky. So in the end, I went a more stylistic route and just created geometry using the snake hook brush with Sculptrason to pull out the eyelashes instead. And I actually like the result a lot more. From a distance, it looks good. So at this point, I'm almost done with the model. There's a few details remaining and it I think I could have brought it into Houdini uh, at this stage to finish it up. I for, At first I brought it into Blender to try to do all my shading there and to finish up some of the, the smaller pieces. 
but I ended up not liking the result. So after cleaning up the model, I tried posing it just to see what it looks like. But then I originally, then I get rid of the pose because I still need to work on some aspects of it. In other words, the model isn't finished. So then using GoZ, I bring it into Blender, set up some simple lights. But then I bring the unposed model into Blender because I realize that there's a lot of smaller details that I haven't done yet. So I'm going to finish those up in Blender. So I, in order to bring in the shirt, I decimated the model because it was high resolution. It was about a million polygons. So I decimated the model and brought that in with color and uh, thinking that I would work on it within Blender because my initial idea was I would rig it in Blender and move the model. But as you'll see, that ended up not working out. Blender's fantastic because I forgot to paint in those little dots on her face and ZBrush, and uh, I Blender is great because it has awesome vertex painting capabilities. So I just did that in Blender. Here I'm beginning the process of texturing and shading my, my model. I create a quick eye texture. And if you look at the image, the original AI, the original image that came out of Mid Journey, there's a lot of shadow where the eye meets the upper eyelid. And Blender, again, just shines because Within Blender, I'm able to do texture painting directly within the program. And in order to get that look, I just paint it. A lot of basic shading going on here, nothing too crazy. One thing I am doing, however, is I am using Megascan textures for roughness channels to add a little bit of variation within the specularity. Here I'm pulling out those rings that surround her neck. Uh, and unfortunately in Eevee, you can't get lighting. I don't know, maybe you can, can somebody help me out here? Uh, it, the, it seems like the emission can't work as a, as a light source. Here I'm painting in the top shadow of the eye directly on the texture, which is so cool.
working on hooking up a Fresnel to the head to give a little bit more sheen on the sides there. But I couldn't quite get it to fade out properly. The Fresnel was too sharp, which I really didn't like. I'm setting up a volume cube to try to match that atmosphere that's in the original image. Here I'm setting up a quick armature because I had the idea that I was going to rig this character. and poser within Blender. But that ends up not working because I think it's too high resolution. So I bring everything back into ZBrush. It's quite tedious, but I think in the end worth it. And I pose the model in ZBrush and decide to go the Houdini route. So after bumbling around in Blender, and losing about maybe three or four hours of work, I decide to do all my rendering and shading over again in Houdini using Redshift. So I'm taking all these assets, again, bringing them in with Modeler for Houdini, naming everything because that'll make my process a lot easier and going through and creating a material one at a time for each object. A lot of the same principles apply to the shading process to what I was doing in Blender. A lot of uh, triplanar or box texturing, triplanar texturing, utilizing uh, mega scan textures. Here I'm painting in a specularity mask in Houdini which is awesome. I wish ZBrush had this functionality, but essentially what I'm doing is I'm layering vertex colors and I'm using that color attribute as a specularity mask. And that is a really great trick within Houdini because it makes the rendering process, the texturing and rendering process really flexible because you can bring in a model with vertex textures, say from ZBrush, with no UVs, uh, with pretty bad topology, and paint layers of different vertex, or rather point attributes within Houdini, and then within your Redshift network, grab those attributes and then use them as masks to drive different attributes within the shader. The texturing process in Houdini is so flexible and man, I just love it. If you look at the image, 
there's a little bit of glow to her eyes, which I tried to match in my render. Again, I'm using that technique here of adding a attribute directly to the points of the geometry and then using that attribute to change the color slightly of the horns. Setting up a quick HDRI to help out the lighting a little bit and add some interesting reflections. I messed with the face a lot because I painted my textures a little too dark. Again, if you look in the image, they're a little bit more pink. But at this point, I'm kind of just going my own route, I'm not trying to nail the concept exactly. Setting up volume within Redshift and uh, which I love doing because now within each light, I can dial in exactly how much I want the lights to affect the fog volume. I'm painting out the dark underneath her eyes a little bit to get her eyeballs to blend more in her face because I painted all the way around the border of her eye, which gives them kind of a strange look. Nearing the end here, the last thing I did was added a, another Megascans roughness texture, triplanar texture onto the armor pieces, set up my camera and that was the last time.